Hello and welcome to this Rygate, um, Rygate College Further Mechanics video on Hooke's Law and Conservation of Energy Problems. So let's have a look at what we've got here. In previous lessons you've covered that the elastic potential energy uh, in a stretched spring or string is lambda x squared over 2L, where x is the extension or compression and L is the natural length of the string. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the principle of conservation of energy and also the work energy principle to solve these problems. Let's have a look at the first one, fairly straightforward one. We've got a block of mass four kilograms attached to one end of a spring whose natural length is two. Worth writing that down. It's important in mechanics questions to extract the information from the text. Uh, the modulus of elasticity is 128 newtons. The other end of the string is fixed to O, and the block is held three meters from O and released. So it's going to come back in this direction. So that total distance there is three meters. So we're going to use conservation of energy here. We're going to say what's happening at A. So at A, there's elastic potential energy. The string is stretched. So we've got lambda times the extension squared. Now the length of the string is two. We've stretched it to three. The extension is therefore one over two times. There's no kinetic energy here and no potential energy. No potential energy in the whole system because it's on the horizontal. But make sure you actively consider each type of energy. Right, when it reaches its natural length, there's no extension, so the elastic potential energy is zero, and the kinetic energy is going to be a half mv squared. So I solve this equation, I get that v squared is 16, so V is equal to four meters per second. And so we've used the principle of conservation of energy to solve this question. Let's look at the next question then. So here we've got a ball of mass two kilograms attached to a light elastic string, and this time it's held um, attached to the ceiling and held vertically. The natural length is two and the modulus of elasticity is 100. It's held at its natural length, so we'll call that A. So that's the natural length. And then it's released from rest. What's the distance that it travels, which we're going to call X, before it comes instantaneously to rest? I've taken P equals zero to be the ceiling. You could take it as here at this natural length point, or you could take it at its lowest point. Those are all options. Um, I tend to favor taking the ceiling. That's going to mean that the potential energy is negative because it's below my starting level. It doesn't matter where you take it from so long as you're consistent. So let's have a look at what's happening. We've got um, at the natural length so when it's its starting position the elastic potential energy is zero the kinetic energy <clears throat> is also zero excuse me um, and the potential energy well that is going to be minus mgh so minus two times g times two That's equal to whatever is happening at B. The elastic potential energy there is lambda, which is 2x squared, the extension squared, over 2 times the natural length, uh, plus kinetic energy is 0. Let's put EPE. Kinetic energy is 0. And the potential energy is now going to be minus 2, uh, so that's mg and the distance is x plus 2, because it's 2 plus an extra x. So overall, this gives me an equation of 25x squared minus 19.6x equals 0. So x is going to be 0 0.784, or x is 0. 
x is zero corresponds to the starting position. This value is at B. Just check you've answered the question because it might ask you how far is it below the ceiling? In fact, it doesn't. It says find the distance the ball drops. So we can write that the ball drops 0.784 metres. But just check you have answered the question because uh, it's easy to, to miss that detail at the end. Right, um, next question. We've now got some external forces acting. So in this question, the table that things are resting on is rough. So let's have a look at what we've got. We've got a mass of 0.5 kilograms attached to a string. Natural length is one. So natural length is one. Modulus of elasticity is 50. Other end is attached to O as a fixed point. The coefficient of friction between the plane is 0.4. So we've got a lot of things going on here. Make a careful note of them. So uh, mu is 0.4. The particle is initially at rest here, one metre from where it starts. It's projected along the plane with a speed of six. Find the greatest distance achieved by the particle. So that is going to be when it has zero velocity, when it reaches that point there. So we're going to need to know what R is so that we can use mu R in our work energy principle. So that's very straightforward. We get that R is equal to 0.5 G. So mu R, which is what friction will be, is going to be 0.4 multiplied by 0.5, which is 0.2 G. So we've worked that out, ready to use later on. Right, the work energy principle, we're going to say the kinetic energy at the start here is a half times M, which is a half times six squared. There's no pot potential energy. Don't need to consider that in our equation plus elastic potential energy is zero because this is where the string is not stretched, is equal to the kinetic energy at A is zero plus the elastic potential energy, which is going to be lambda x squared over two multiplied by one plus the work energy principle, we've got to have whatever work comes out of the system. And that's going to be the work done against friction. So that's work done, which is the force 0.2 G for F uh, multiplied by the distance multiplied by X. So this comes out to give a quadratic equation, 25x squared plus 0.2g x minus 9 equals 0, which gives x is 0.562 metres. Then we need to answer the question. It asks, what's the greatest distance? So the greatest distance is going to be 1 plus this value here. So that's going to give me 1.56 metres to three significant figures. So remember that answers in mechanics should be given to three significant figures at most. Part B, what's the speed of the particle when it returns to O? Well, we can use work energy here for the whole journey. So at the beginning, it's got um, kinetic energy, a half m v squared. It's got no elastic potential energy uh, and as we said before no poten potential energy. So what happens to all of that energy? Energy, initial energy is final energy so that's going to be a half m v squared which we're trying to find plus any work done. Now what's the work done this time? It's going to be the force, the frictional force 0.2 g multiplied by that distance x and then back again because the particle goes out and then comes back again. So it's going to be multiplied by 2 times 0 
use the full figure in your working. And when you solve that, you get that V is equal to 4.40 metres per second. So that's a question where we need to use the work energy principle. Right, the final question, we've got a string natural length two. So again, let's make a note of these things. Natural length is two and the modulus of elasticity is 15 G. One end of the string is attached to a fixed point and three, the mass of three kilograms hangs on the other end. So we've got three G working like that. Find the extension in the string when it's in equilibrium. So we've then got that the tension must be equal to 3G in equilibrium. So 3G is lambda X over L, because that's what the tension in a stretched string is equal to. So we've got 15G X over 2. And this gives me X is 0.4 metres. Uh, so that have we answered the question? Yes, we found the extension of the string when the body is in equilibrium. Right. Let's just think what's happening there. This is 2.4 metres below. We're then going to stretch it a further 0.1. And then it's released. And it says find the speed of the particle as it passes through the equilibrium position. So let's use our conservation of energy to work that out. We've got at the position down here, what's happening? Again, I've taken the ceiling as being potential energy zero. So we've got elastic potential energy is lambda, which is 15 G, 0.5, that's the extension, um, squared over two times two. So why is it 0 0.5? Because it was 0 0.4 and we've pulled it down a further 0 0.1. Plus the potential energy. Now the potential energy is minus mgh. So that's m, which is three g multiplied by 2.5. And kinetic energy is zero. When it passes through the equilibrium position, its elastic potential energy is lambda. Now the extension is 0.4 squared over 2 times 2. The potential energy is minus 3g times 2.4 plus, so that's potential energy, kinetic energy, which I have to write on the line below, is a half m v squared. So solving this, we end up with v squared is 0 0.3675 over 1.5, and v is equal to 0 0.495 meters per second. Right, the final part of the question, C, says explain clearly why this is the maximum speed attained by the particle. If you think of the journey of the particle as it goes from its extended position upwards, here the tension in the string is going to be greater than 3G, and that's why it's going to accelerate in that direction. So it starts moving in this direction, that the acceleration is upwards. When it reaches the equilibrium position, the sum of the forces is zero. So there is no acceleration there, acceleration is zero. And that must be maximum speed because when we go above that position, the particle is now decelerating because the tension in the string is less than 3G, so it will be slowing down. So at the equilibrium position, the sum of the forces is zero, so the acceleration is zero. This means uh, maximum velocity is reached at this point. So the key fact here 
is that the sum of the forces is zero and that gives you your maximum velocity. So I hope you found that video useful. You need to do lots of practice questions. Uh, be very clear on where you're taking your potential energy zero from and make sure you actively consider each kind of uh, energy to make sure that you don't miss one out.